make sure that you um, make yourselves available to be able to come on this Saturday. If you can, it would be well worth your time, well worth your drive. The encounter will be spectacular, spectacular. So facing me this Saturday, what is it, June the 20th, 10 a.m., hope to see your face in the place. Pray for us if you can't make it. All right, so this is the question that the Lord would have for me to share with his people tonight. He says, I want you to ask them this. I want you to ask them this question, Delphine. I feel the Holy Ghost, y'all. He says, ask them, can you see God in chaos? Can you see God in chaos? That's the question the Lord wanted me to ask. Can you see God in chaos? Have you made it to a place yet in your life as to where you can see God in the midst of chaos? Have you arrived there yet? Have you got there yet? Has your maturity level got there yet as to where you can see God in chaos? Can you see him in chaos? And so let me get here for a second so that I can... I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the definition according to what Webster has to say about chaos. Let me get the definition up here. I can give you my own definition as far as what I pull out of my spirit, you know, um, concerning chaos. Let's see what it comes up with here. Chaos. Can you see God in chaos? I promise you it's going to be real good tonight. It says that it is complete disorder and confusion. So can you see God in chaos? When there is disorder and confusion, can you see God in chaos? Have you made it to a place yet as to where you can see God in chaos? Have you got there yet as to where you can see him in chaos? Because, unfortunately, we can't escape um, certain elements of chaos. Life brings about chaos. Um, different things, things that happens in life bring about chaos. So can you see God in chaos? Just so that you know, um, sometimes it's God that's working in chaos. It's not always the enemy. It may be the enemy that orchestrates the chaos, you know, or causes the chaos, but God, I'm going to say that God will orchestrate the chaos because he will take control over how the chaos goes. But can you see God in chaos? Not everything is always going to be so beautiful. Can you see God in chaos? That's the question tonight that I am posing per the Holy Spirit. Can you see God in chaos? Well, it would seem as though now our, our nation, um, our world, really, to be honest with you, is in a state of chaos, as though it would seem that it is in a state or being of chaos. And so that would mean that all of the different things that are going on, there is um, um, what, a pandemic which is brought in chaos. There is racial division and racial tension that is bringing about chaos. There is financial dilemmas that is going on that is brought, has brought about um, an element of chaos. But I'm asking you the question tonight, can you see God in chaos? Have your eyes been trained or have you focused your eyes good enough yet to be able to see God in chaos? Have you identified where God is? Have you been able yet to see him? Have you been able yet to see him in the midst of what is going on that is going opposite of what you would desire for it to go? Have you seen God in it yet? It's not going the way you want it, but have you seen God in it yet? Lord, help me tonight. Huh? Uh, mm. It's not going the way you want it to go, but have you seen God in it yet? Have you been able to identify God in the midst of that chaos? Have you? Because if you have not been able to identify God in the midst of that chaos, then I want to tell you or encourage you 
make a suggestion to you to look again. This is what I want to suggest to you to look again. Look again. Just so maybe you may be like the servant in the Bible as to where the man of God told him, said, listen, go and see. It's going to rain. Go and check. He comes back, says, I don't see anything. I, you know, there's nothing that's happening. Then he goes and comes back with another report, says, I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. So I want to encourage you, go look again. Can you see God in chaos? Your victory is contingent upon it if you can see God. You have no control over the chaos. None of us have any control over the chaos. None of us have any control over things that will happen. Life brings about certain things. But can you see God in the midst of it? Can you see the reward of it? Can you see the benefits of it? Can you see down the road and see the beautiful place that it's going to bring you to? Can you see that? Are you able yet to focus in and see that? Where is your view? Where is your vision? Where is your perception? Can you see God in chaos? Can you see him? Or does it take everything having to be so beautiful for you in order for you to serve God? Does it take God having to have the grass so beautiful and the grass so green? Does it take God having to uh, cuddle and cradle you? Does it take God having to give to you and all? Does it take God having to do all of that, focus all of his attention on you? Does it take him having to do that? Or have you brought yourself to a place or developed yourself to a place as to where you can see God in chaos? Because if you cannot see see God in chaos, y'all, your life is going, uh, ooh, it's going to be full of a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble, and a lot of trouble that will have triumph over you if you cannot see God in chaos. You've got to bring yourself to a point to see what it is that God is doing. You've got to bring yourself to a point to, to be able to see how all this is working together for my good. You've got to bring yourself to that point. You've got to be able to see past it. You've got to be able to reach beyond the break. You've got to be able to stand and withstand. Can you see God in chaos? That's the question tonight. Can you see God in chaos? Can you see him? Or do all you see is the enemy? Is all your conversation about what the devil is doing? Because all you see is what he's bringing about. Is that the situation? Is that your circumstance? Is that how it work, it's working out for you? Or can you see God in the midst of chaos? So it doesn't look good so to the eye. It doesn't sound good to the ear. It doesn't feel good to the hand. It doesn't taste good to the mouth. But can you? See God in the midst of chaos. Can you see him? Chaos. Let's go into the word chaos tonight. Chaos. Definition of chaos, according to the dictionary, says that it is complete disorder and confusion. Complete, it says. Listen to the word it uses now. This is out of the dictionary. It says complete, right? Complete. So that means that it's in every angle, everywhere you turn, chaos is there. It doesn't look like anything is working for you. It's gotten just that bad to the point where Paul would say it like this. He said, we are troubled on every side. That's what he said. Every side, every angle that we go, there is some type of trouble. It just seems like no matter which way I turn, there is something going on. I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. That type situation right there. It just seems like it's getting more worse than it is getting better. Can you see God? In chaos, those type situations. Can you see God? It says complete disorder and confusion. Disorder, let's talk about that. Things just out of sync. 
Nothing is in its proper place like it's supposed to be. Number two is where six is. Six is where nine is. Nine is where three is. Five is where four is. It's just complete disorder. Things are just not coming together like they should be coming together. That's chaos disorder. It says complete disorder and confusion. So let me say this to you and let me show you. Some would say, well, listen, uh, not every part of my life is in disorder. Uh, Not every part of my life is in confusion. Some would say that, but let me help you with this. Order begins at numero uno. It's how order begins. So if uh, it's numero uno and then whatever number gets off throws all the rest of it off track. Please understand and hear what I'm saying. It throws everything else off track. So therefore, if one number gets out of sync, everything else gets out of sync as well. It just throws the whole thing off. So it says complete. That's the reason why it could use the word complete. Because when one thing gets out of order, just one, it don't take but one, that's something, ain't it, y'all? You would think that we would get a better deal than that. Why is it everything has got to be hinged upon that one thing? If I'm mess around and just mess up on one thing, I could throw everything else off. Yes, if I knock down one domino, all the rest of the dominoes will begin to fall down. So that one thing can knock stuff off sync for me. So it says complete disorder and confusion. Confusion meaning that there is no clarity. That's what confusion means. That there is a lack of clarity. There is no assurance. There is no certainty certainty of a thing. So it is confusion. One of the worst things to be in is to be in confusion in a relationship, not knowing where you stand in that relationship, the place of confusion. It is one of the most terrible place to be in as to where you've got to always be trying to define where you are in the relationship, always trying to, well, I'm just trying to see where I'm at, you know, I'm just trying to see where we're at with this. I mean, because I don't know where we are, or trying to define where you are in a relationship. It is a place of confusion. It says complete. Complete. But now notice the way it's set up. It says disorder and confusion. So listen to this here, y'all, which is an indicator to know, you know, I love words. I pay attention to words. That's why I read them slow. This is the thing about it. The disorder is what caused the confusion. See y'all, 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 I told y'all I was coming through here tonight. Y'all should have already been ready. You should have just been settled in and ready to ride because I I, I put it in the title. I said a good one tonight. I told y'all that. See y'all, I guess y'all thought I was just playing. This is the thing about it. See, Disorder is what causes confusion. See, that, that Jesus Christ, man. Come on, listen. Let's get on in here tonight, God. Let's do what we need to do so we can go to sleep and get up tomorrow and rock again. This is the thing about it here. Disorder causes confusion, right? So knock something out of order and watch and see just how much confusion your butt going to be in, okay? Just knock one thing out of order. Mm. And it'll make so much confusion come into your life, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, to my wives, dishonor your husband and watch and see how much confusion show up. Knock it out of order. Knock it out of order. Knock them out the block, Rick. Knock them out, Rick. <laughs> Knock them out. <laughs> Disorder. Huh? Let God get out of numero uno in your life. Hmm? <laughs> and watch how much chaos shows up. Watch how much confusion shows up. Get them out of order and watch and see what goes on. Dishonor what God has placed in your life to order. Dishonor it. And watch how much confusion shows up. Disorder is the prelude to confusion. Disorder. Get it twisted about where it's supposed to be. Get it twisted and removed out of its rightful place and into another place and watch how much confusion gets started. Y'all thought I came to play tonight, didn't you? I didn't come to play. 
I didn't come to play.